Joining us now on the show, we have a man who will be performing at Download Festival 2023 alongside his band's Blind Channel. My friends, show some love for Nico! Hello. What's up, guys? Hey, my friend. How you doing? Awesome. Sorry. Yeah. Just got, just got in here. How you guys doing? Good, man. How are you? Where, whereabouts in the world are you right now? Uh, I'm actually uh, I'm in Oulu in northern Finland, the city where we uh, where we're from, where we started the band uh, ten years ago. I'm just like we're having a holiday right here, right now. Yeah, so just chilling out. Pre-download. When do you head over to to the UK or Europe? Well, yeah, we're, you're in Europe anyway. <laughs> uh, the tour, like the the festival season starts next week. I think it's uh, Tuesday when it starts. So. Uh, I'm not really sure when we're heading to the <laughs> UK, but <laughs> we're going to do a couple of festivals before download, uh, just to get up to speed, you know, get the heat going. Um, and then, then we're going to hit the, hit the UK and, uh, come to download. Yeah. Damn. That is awesome, my friend. And I do love the rock star nature of it as well. While you're like, oh, fuck it. Someone tell me where to be and when. That's what, that's what TMs <laughs> yeah. are for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Like, somebody tell me when the plane leaves and I'll be I'll be on board. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, let's talk about the last time that you were in the United Kingdom. It was in support of Electric Callboy, I do believe, on their headline run. And I was fortunate enough to catch you guys at the London show at the Apollo. And I got to say, first time seeing you guys and like, holy shit, the wall of noise live that is Blind Channel. Like there was people in that room who were literally walking in through the doors hearing your sound and just started dancing like immediately <laughs> like it's infectious dude like how how was that run of shows for you and the boys uh it was it was amazing like the, the whole tour was uh, was amazing and we've always loved like performing in the uk and yeah yeah it, it was it was a fun tour and i think the tour ended at the london show so there was like a lot of like festivities in yeah. the air like it was it was just amazing a great 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 party Hell yeah, because you came out with Electric Callboy, didn't you, at the end of their set, and you had like a big like touring party on stage moment. Yeah, yeah, they they do that. Like, we love we love the guys at Electric Callboy, and they always have this thing that when it's the last day of the tour, they just invite everyone on stage, and yeah, we had a lot of fun. Sick. That's awesome. That was cool. Was there any sort of tour pranks going on with those guys? Uh no, not. Not too much on this tour. Like I, I think on this tour we were everyone was a bit busy. I think probably because like Electric Callboy, they had this, uh, they had a huge produ production with them. And oh yeah, of course. A lot of production with us as well. So not that many pranks, but we did those. We did some pranks like uh, the last time we were on tour with them. I think it was something like we had a photo photos of us and we just uh, <laughs> put them all around their sets like they when they. <laughs> When they go to the mic stand, there's a like photo of me like looking at them. It's like, <laughs> Amazing, so true, me memorable like, kind of thing. Yeah, we've done a lot, of, a lot of pranks. Yeah. Oh, that's phenomenal. And I mean, if there wasn't that much pranking on this tour, was there a bit of partying? Because Electric Callboy do strike me as a band. Who at the end of the set, they are like beers. Yeah, like holy shit, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that was definitely partying going. Like, and even like this tour, and like we've known the guys for for two years now, um, and like well, we're from Finland, and we always thought that we're the we're the best in drinking like vodka, drinking anything like <laughs> like give 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 us any band, and we will out drink, drink them any any time <laughs> any day. But then like it turns out like those guys like to party as well, so we we had some crazy parties going on. I think there's a lot of. Uh... A lot of nations that are sort of like we're the best drinkers. I think the British people we think we're the best drinkers, but I think we just drink the most, and but we end up passing out quicker than most. Yeah, people. like the, the end. The end result of British drinking is usually embarrassment. Where I feel like Europeans have like a class to them. The drunker that they get, like, and then it's either mischievousness that comes out <laughs> on the other side once the drinks start <laughs> flowing. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, do you do you guys know Purple Rain? The drink. I think I've heard of it. What what's what does it consist of? 
Get, I, I don't really know, but like some of our like listeners in the UK, they were like, you have to drive pur- purple drink. Like it's an awesome fucking drink and it's going to get you fucked up. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And then after one show, I was like, can, can someone order me a purple, purple rain? I think it was. And yeah, then it, it wasn't that bad actually. <laughs> yeah. I still, I was still on my feet after that. Let's go. We actually have some, because we're live right now, we have some people in the chat saying they do recognize the Purple Rain beverage. So we might have to go dig yeah. in those out of festival season. Connie says she uh, met you outside Rock City in Nottingham, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I remember that. Hell yeah. What a venue as well. Shout out Rock City, one of the big historic venues yep. in the UK. But Nico, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about was... That night on the Electric Corbel Tour, it was my first time seeing you guys live. And it was, like, I heard your material beforehand, but I wasn't quite prepared for the fact that you almost sound heavier live than you do on record. Like, on record, the production is really polished and fine, whereas live, you guys seem to have, like, an extra gear. Like, is that coincidental or is that something that was by nature where you're like, in actual fact, let's make the, the songs that we write for people to listen to almost sound a little bit softer. So when they see us, live it really is a sucker punch around the face uh i'm not sure like i think i also think think that we sound a bit more heavier maybe it's because there's like more adrenaline involved (laughs) during the during the live shows and everybody's just ripping their instruments heavier or something like that the drummer is hitting a bit harder than he did on the studio maybe something like that and it really got us inspired because like uh, we've seen a lot of like videos or heard heard we've also heard through videos and stuff like how we sound live and we were like we also felt that like we're we sound heavier live than we do in the studio which is kind of like what inspired the next album we're gonna record this summer Ooh. um we we want it to be like we want to be as heavy on the album as we are um in the in the live set so yeah it really got us inspired maybe it's just i i'd say it has something to do with adrenaline or maybe yeah. uh maybe our sound engineer like who does that does our shows maybe he just does a really heavy job just maybe throws everything it. up like, <laughs> <Just boots laughs> low end. yeah but yeah we really like that i was gonna ask um obviously you're from finland uh, growing up what was it your sort of influences because i know like a lot of the scandinavian countries have very into their metal and heavier music but i think you your sound i get a lot of like new metal and a lot of like american influences what were you listening to sort of growing up like um like i'm original like i'm the we- i'm the weirdo in the band because like <laughs> all the guys have this very metal background and yeah. i came from like hip-hop kind of thing yeah. uh, i i was producing beats for rappers i had my own rap posse and so on <laughs> what, what was your rap posse called up? <laughs> I don't remember what was it called. We had a lot of names, and they're Finnish names that wouldn't make any oh, sense. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, we had like we had this rap posse kind of thing. But I also like I always loved like rock music. Linkin Park was my favorite band. Yeah, and I think even uh, the other guys, even though they were from heavier backgrounds, they were listening to In Flames or Children of Bottom or whatever. Um, and they loved Linkin Park as well. And that's what brought us together. Like they started a band and they needed a rapper. And I always wanted to play with a rock band that kind of started it. So Linkin Park was like a huge influence. We didn't have any new metal bands in Finland at the to- time. So we had just, we had MTV though. Uh, <laughs> and we were just listening to Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park, all those kind of bands. Like those influenced our sound a lot. So we were talking about this the other day. It's like, I think that's the last time I can remember where rock and hip hop were really connected and as in the mainstream. And I think that's, that's all music needs to come back. I reckon it's having a bit of a resurgence with artists like, you know, uh, trippy red and like MGK with those collabs where they do start blurring yeah. the lines a little bit and taking like, you know, like Lil Wayne was on that last MGK record on two different songs, like one more rocky sound and one, and then a rappier sound and one. So like, I think bands are starting to creep into like allowing those sounds. And as someone who does come from the rap world previously, Nico, those collaborations, is that something that blind channel, will be looking for in the future because collaborations obviously are such a massive part of modern music yeah definitely like um we're always down for like making making cool songs with cool people like that's we're always down for something like that actually we have some cool collaborations in mind we all already in talks that some 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 are probably gonna happen for the next album and we're always down to like 
we're not how do you say like yeah we're definitely a rock band but when it comes to music we love all kinds of music like i still listen to a lot of like rappers and even pop artists whatever like if you're doing your thing we respect that and we listen to all kinds of music and we're always down for collaborating with like anyone who has their own thing and we feel like it's all about the song actually like if we have a cool song and we feel like uh like this this song could really use some of this like if the song works that that's it like let's just do it like who no matter what what genre or what kind of artist wants to collaborate we're always down for it hell yeah and you mentioned like your influences being all over the place whose idea was it like who brought the idea to the table of covering left outside alone by anastasia because <laughs> honestly that is one of my top five favorite covers of all time and like i think is i had no idea that you covered that song until i saw you play it live and like you started playing and i was like hold on is this what i think it is and then all of a sudden like like your pipes carry that song so hard because obviously anastasia's got such a one-on-one -one voice but your pipes do it justice man yeah who brought that to the table uh, i think that came like uh it was during it was just in the beginning of kobe we were all under lockdown and uh are like we we have this like guilty pleasure playlist kind of thing uh <laughs> that is only like uh the pop hits in the beginning of the 2000s and it's a pop hit list and i think like our guitarist jonas and uh the uh our other singer Joel, they were listening to it and left outside came like the song just came on and they were like wow this is like this sounds really awesome like and then they already had a riff in mind like if we would do a song like this we would do it like this and then they called me like we had the like craziest idea and when i went to see them in the studio they already had some kind of like version ready like what do you think and i was like this is awesome let's just do it oh that is phenomenal because yeah like that cover slaps so hard man my, so hard. my girlfriend and her mum went to see anastasia last year in birmingham <laughs> wow but awesome. anastasia was still touring yeah she did the 20th year anniversary i think it was it was of that album but obviously it got postponed because of covid um, a few years but yeah it's been 20 years since but i remember listening to like her in the car with my mum or something and i was like she has got some songs Oh, hell yeah. Big songs. Hell yeah. And your voice absolutely does it justice, Nico. Like, we need, we need more. Thank you. Naughties, <laughs> rock covers. Hell yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of the, the popular culture, obviously, you guys are very well versed in possibly one of the most infamous showcases of music within popular culture, the Eurovision Song Contest. And this year, there was a heavier alternative influence than it seems like there has been in post years i mean even like that sort of that cha 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 song that just sounded yeah. like an electric callboy track voyager from australia were in this year's who are like a sort of genty proggy band yeah like i feel like eurovision is ahead of the times when it comes to getting in like niche metal, niche metal yeah. Yeah. <laughs> into like, the mainstream what, yeah what were your experiences like being a part of that whole production and that whole show like what what was it like as the band members doing that um, I think it was a really cool experience and it helped us a lot. It was also like, uh, you learn a lot during that time, like, cause it's, it's a big production. Like, oh, I yeah. think it's like biggest in the world, uh, similar to like, maybe just after Super Bowl in the, in the U S or maybe Super Bowl's bigger. I'm, I'm not sure actually, but it's like, let's just say it's one of the most biggest productions in the world. Hell yeah. So like being a part of that as a band it will like you you don't really sleep at all it's a it's a busy two weeks and you need to be on stage uh, performing your best every time and you also need to be on interviews and meeting fans and it's also hectic and you don't get a lot of sleep and you don't really have time to eat anything and it's a really cute like really good school where like now that we've been doing this like more traditional way on a bigger level though but the more traditional rock bandish kind of thing that we're doing now, there's a lot of similarities. You don't always mm. have time to sleep or <laughs> eat, and you always have to like put on your best show when you're on stage. So it kind of like we learned it during that time, uh, doing that show. So it it was really good and a good experience. Like we also feel like one time was enough. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. One, one time was enough. 
like now we're happy to concentrate on being uh the more traditional kind of rock band but like it was a good experience and we we learned a lot of joining it well that year it's there's a couple of success stories you guys and of course maniskin were on that year so they and they won it didn't they and they'll I think it's in the past Eurovision seemed like oh what do they do after Eurovision whereas you guys and them have seemed to smash it yeah and what I find awesome as well is the fact that like you aren't synonymous with Eurovision like oh no I didn't yeah know. yeah like I had no idea that you were on it until we started researching for this intro and I was like oh no way holy shit they're on Eurovision that's sick <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're actually pretty happy about that. We wanted to do it that way because there are like some artists, like maybe it's the way Eurovision has been in the past. The, the artists that go to go and be a part of that format, they can't really let go of it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's always like every time they name, their name comes up, it's always like, yeah, they're that Eurovision group, and that group. Like, yeah. And we always like, we our dream was never be a, being a part of Eurovision. It was just something we had to do that like COVID was going on. Yep. We couldn't play shows and we wanted to like just keep executing our plan to make, get our uh, music to the people. And that seemed like a good format to do it. And like after that, we kind of decided that that was fun. It was a really cool experience. We learned experience. We learned a lot. But right now we need to be moving on, and we did. So I'm. It actually makes makes me pretty happy to hear that like people don't see us as a like Eurovision band. That like holy shit, you guys were in Eurovision, really? Like it, it, it's. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Sick. Well, we're glad to reassure you on that front because yeah, like as as cool as cool as it is, like I'm not massive on it. I know Ollie watched it this year, and like we haven't really talked about it on the show. But like as far as like you know, cool things for someone to experience as you said like it's a mad show it's a mad production it's literally like a conveyor belt of artists performing all over the course of like one time slot so yeah like as you said it, it was kind of like a boot camp for being in a band because that's very much what festivals are festivals are just one stage go on then let's all have a go and let's all have a crack on it yeah yeah and speaking of festivals look, you look are at that back, segue <laughs> you're back in the uk this next sunday i believe at download festival yeah that's the day yeah you'll be reconnecting with your <laughs> your boys in electric book cowboy they're on the sunday i believe as well as slipknot headlining so what what a day to be be a download yeah our electric cowboy there too really yeah and they're on the same day as on you the same as well day as you, yep. oh shit we're gonna be drinking <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, just, I didn't remember that. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I just saw <laughs> and, the hangover um, hit you it's prematurely as you heard that news. Electric Callboy <laughs> and other some of your other friends, I prevail, are on the, the same day as well. Yeah, I, I actually yeah, I I remember like checking out that I prevail is gonna be there. That that's that's awesome. Like we had this crazy tour with them as well. Like we had so much fun. So Holy shit, it's like a reunion yeah. kind, of, kind of thing. <laughs> Everybody's going to be there. We're going to have so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you are. Hopefully the beers are on ice already because I imagine quite a few are going to be consumed. But I mean, yeah, as Ollie was saying, it's a hell of a day at Download Fest. You've got bands like Slipknot, Parkway Drive, Ghost, Bad Religion, I Prevail, Electric Callboy, Behemoth, G Behemoth, Amity Affliction, just to name a few. And I mean, like Sunday at Download as well, you'll be on the day that is closing out the festival. Like for some people, it's either day three of three day four of four or day five of five so it's a very long weekend and a band like yourselves with the energy that you have uh such a perfect fit for a sunday i mean is that something that you relish in where you do turn up and you're like cool everyone's been going at it this weekend let's inject a little bit of adrenaline into proceedings yeah like our music is a good cure for hungover like <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah it, it works that way so it's yeah I'm, I'm sure it's gonna work and also like it's gonna be our first time at download festival like we've never been there even as an audience and it was crazy because like uh since we were kids uh and we were just like we didn't have a band we were just watching youtube we saw all our yeah. favorite artists performing at download festival and now we're gonna be there so it's it's going to be like, it's going to be our first time there and we're actually performing. It feels crazy. And we're like, we're so hyped to do it. It's going to be so amazing. On the 20th anniversary as well of Download. Yeah. What a year to be a part of. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. 
Hell yeah. Well, Nico, we can't thank you enough for your time today, my friend. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. We can't wait to see you next Sunday at Download Festival. And before we get out of here, have you got a message to any Blind Channel fans? Anything you want people to listen to? Anything you want people to check out? Anything you want to say to them? To our listeners, fans, thank you so much. Keep doing what you do. Check out our new single, Happy Doomsday. Um, and we'll see you at the Download Festival and we see you at every other show we're going to play. Thank you for doing what you do. And thank you guys for having, having no me worries. on the show. Thank you. Thanks for being a great, great guest. Yeah, hell yeah, Nico. Thank you so much. But friends, let's hear it for Nico from Blind Channel. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, bro. That was perfect. Oh, oh that was amazing. Oh, what a nice guy. Hell yeah. What an absolute gentleman. And my friends, it goes without saying, if you are headed to Download Festival, it is an optional. You've got to go and see Blind Channel. Yeah, and as you were saying, Sunday, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for some people, but they've got the music to lift those spirits, lift those pints pints in the air. (laughs) And uh, As Nico said, the band are a very good cure for a hangover. 